Alright, so I posted just now, um, it's uploading, um, but there's something I wanted to add, and this could be a part two, but um, this can be a standalone as well. So let's assume, I'm going to assume you know about why we do IMC intensive CPU stress tests with DDR5, and why running them on DDR4 was not actually a concern, and why typically you would go online and find DDR4 results accompanied by TM5, HCI, but never really concerns with regards to Linpack or Y-Cruncher. In fact, a lot of individuals did not know the Y-Cruncher component stress tester was actually a thing for a very long time, until some individuals <coughs> started posting up online earlier last year, showing how effective they actually were at sussing out DDR5 IMC instability. So, anyway. If you know why we do them, so we have to ask the question, duration, duration, what's the deal? Same thing with CPU tests. So, like, what would you regard as doable, like, or stable, like, so, it's 20 minutes over here. Is 20 minutes enough, right? Maybe you, maybe you'd want something, like, a bit more, right, so maybe you'd want, like, 30 minutes? What do you, maybe you think, like, okay, that's not enough. Maybe let's do... A lot of people pass um, R23 for 30 minutes, by the way. And that's, like, regarded as okay nowadays. This is heavier. So 30 of this is better than this, but, okay, so, so 30 is not even high. So a lot of people would say, well, this, is not, this isn't 30, but, like, you get the point. Um, some people would say, no, 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 we have to do, like, an hour, at least, or, like, maybe more than an hour, right? So let's say... Fifty. It's not very long. I think this is fifty. Let's go back to Apex. Here we go. Fifty as well. Okay, never mind. Fifty again. Okay, so. 50 is about what I've been doing for a while on these runs, but I did 60 one point. 60 was half an hour as well. So I like, typically, to do half an hour runs. So even here, I think I have another one. 5, 12. This is white cruncher. This is like, again, half an hour or so. Yeah. It's about half an hour. I think more or less. Oh, 47 minutes, okay, so 47 minutes here. Okay, it's about an hour, yeah, hour, because, yeah, 47 here, and this next run of results, so this would have been about an hour, so this is about an hour, okay. But an hour here, right? An hour here as well, more or less, whatever. Half an hour. Half an hour, hour. Yeah. So one whole hour over here. I think I open up this app late. Had to have been. Do I have core tip open? Oh, yeah, I do. Core tips open, so hit Nike C. Okay. So, I have done an hour before on something like Y-Cruncher. Um, but then it wasn't half an hour over here. And I've done half an hour runs typically on IBT or Linpack Extreme. Um, and then recently I've been doing, like I saw, I showed you guys... Um, I did, uh, because a lot of guys are using half an hour for R23, so I figured half an hour of, of OCCT is a bit, actually. So, I've been doing these settings. Small, data size, extreme variable, half an hour run, and then check for wear errors. Max temp equalized 88C was about, um, on the i9, I did only 20 minutes. And why? So why? Come over here. 300 watts. 260 amps, 93 max. So, you have to understand, you have to understand, the goal is to get your CPU stable enough to where it's going to run most workloads, almost all workloads, stable. But inference, because testing your CPU for extensive lengths of time, depending on the 
lithography of the chips are like 10 nm, like the iron line is. Uh, right, so if I show you core temp. Well, there's a particular reason why you see online a lot of guys doing R23 minutes now. Because, dude, the thing is, if you run this chip <laughs> at 300 watts for too, too long, like let's say 3 hours and then 6 hours, all of a sudden, at 10 hours mark, you're gonna notice you're gonna be like, oh, what the hell? I need like 10 millivolts, 15 millivolts more. What's happening? That's exactly what happened to a lot of people. That's why you see me over here. Like, <laughs> doing <laughs> 20 minutes. Because I'm deathly scared. Like, I do not want this chip to degrade. Let's say I had. 10 hours of lifespan at this current load. I have exhausted 20 minutes of that 10 hour lifespan at that current load. Once you hit whatever number of hours it takes, you've lost 10 millivolts. I'm telling you right now, you don't see it coming. When it happens, you feel horrible. So you have to respect stress tests. So, if we're doing 30 minutes, because I'm, okay, I'm going to admit 20 was low, right? I could have done, done 30, but I, I wanted 20 because I felt like it was going to pass. If we're doing 30 minute tests, so if we go to OCN, wait. No, not here, man. What am I doing? Wait. I'm gonna say 30 minutes or 23. I'm sure I can find a few guys real quick. Good lord. Uh, back then they used to run Prime 85 for hours, bro. God bless them. I probably could because the lithography was so high, like the the link between gates was so high that probably fine. I want to find where someone says something regarding. Uh, Falcon time. Huh? Ooh. Wow. Boost my ego. Shall I like or love it? I have to like it at least, because I appreciate it. Thank you for... Anyway. Uh, I want to find... So basically they were having a conversation. Here we go. Here it is, here it is. So why? Why does Falkentine advise 30 minutes of R23? Why? Why? Why is the standard on this app this? This is our standard right now. Why? That's our... That's our... Standard. That's our current guideline. And why am I out here doing this? Harder test, but... Same duration of time. Why? Because the point is... We have learnt by now... That running these kinds of workloads... For extended periods... Will actually degrade your shit. They actually will. It actually will. Like... So... You have a lifespan, okay? You don't have infinite 300 watt runs, okay? You have maybe one or two, and that's it. And then you stop, stop right there, okay? One to two, maybe three, up to half an hour durations of like heavy testing. And by that point, you've collected enough data and you run your trip for daily. Do not try and run hours of heavy testing. And that's why it's so silly 
to need to do something like test RAM reboot stability. And then try and, and do Y crunch for hours. You cannot do it, dude. You have to be selective. Like this is a heavy load, dude. This is this is me, you know, taking time out of my CPU's lifespan just to test if this RAM can run at this data rate between reboots. It's all I'm looking for. Because remember I told you in the previous video, this is all that we need to actually infer the RAM's internal integrity. Like, that's all we need to know the RAM's actually stable. Like, the RAM, if it can run Pydeck for like, an, like you know, 90 minutes, it's actually internally stable. Like, this RAM is stable. Guys, you can't argue. If your RAM kit runs a workload like this, or HCI or whatever, for a long duration, it's stable. It is. It is. But the problem is, that if your IMC and your board can't maintain the signal accurately and reliably and your retrains are breaking things, okay? The retrains will inherently compromise these two, okay? If you break reboot stability, you will fail these two. You will fail in general, you'll just fail everything. You'll fail games, everything, okay? So, you have to be selective. You have to be selective. If, you do, if you're not selective, you're going to degrade. I promise you. Okay, respect your chip. It doesn't have countless hours at high at high wattage and current load and stuff like that. Like, I have said a lot of things OCN on that forum you guys saw there, that thread. And very, very seldom am I disagreed with. Whenever I speak about my takes on CPU OCing and stability checks and everything, a lot of reputable guys like my posts okay so i'm cooking like let me cook